Hello Internet, I'm Mihai. It is the third episode of the Jenkins Pipeline tutorial. Let's start. In this video, we will write unit tests for our web server. Unit tests are very important during an automated deployment. They allow us to check if the developer didn't break something. I already have my Visual Studio code opened. I need to install two modules. They will allow us to write and run unit tests. The first module is Mocha. Open the terminal and write npm install hyphen hyphen save dev and mocha enter it was installed the save dev will install the module as a development module it means mocha will not go to production server the second module is super test let's install it it was installed i open package json file close the terminal i don't need it do you see the dev dependencies block? Our modules went there because we specified the save dev option. Without it, modules would have gone straight into the dependencies section. Good job, everyone. Now I will write our first unit test. I create the folder test. Let's do it. And I create the file server.test.js. First thing we have to do is to import all dependencies. I write const assert equals require assert semicolon const request equals require super test semicolon const server equals require i write the path to our server file now i create the suite for our tests describe i write the title test request and i write the function where we will have all our tests before we start the test cases, we need to get and mock our server. Go to server.js file, export the app. So I copy the app, scroll the, at the very bottom, and put here the app. So it will be exported. Now create before all block. Before all function and mocked app equals to request server dot app we have to be able to access mocked up variable so declare as global for all test cases let mocked up now i write the first test case let's call the get request and check the status code it test request to async function const get response equals await mocked up get and we specify our path this path i took it from uh, server.js it is here it is the same thing one more thing, I declare the function asynchronous so that I can use await on the get request. Once we have the response, we should compare its value with the expected one. We expect status code to be 200. I also took it from server.js, it is 200 here. I write assert dot equal get response status. We expect it to be 200. I write the message status code. First test case is ready. Let's write the second one. In the second test case, I want to check if the timestamp is generated and returned to the client. It, the title will be test if request to our path returns timestamp. I put semicolon, I call the get method.
const get response equals await mocked up get our path. I check the status code assert equal get response status. I expect it to be 200 and I write the message status code. Now I want to test the response text. It is assert match get response dot text. Here will be our regex. I will write it later. And the message is timestamp. I am looking for the timestamp, but I don't know the exact value, so I'm going to use a regular expression to test it. Go to regex r.com. I will put the link in the description. Generally, it is a tool which helps you to test regular expressions. I copied the server response from the server.js and passed it in the text section. Delete everything from here. Go to server.js file. Copy the response. Past it here. I will modify it a bit. I will remove the quotes, the escaped characters. For the timestamp variable, I write some random digits. For the running time seconds, I write some random seconds. And for up version, I write our up version from package JSON. It is 100. Just copy it and passed. It will be some server response. And what I want to test if the timestamp is present. I copy the first part of the first line. I copy the BR tag and I go to the cheat sheet. Here we have information that if you want to match digits, you have to use slash D. We expect to have some number of digits, more than one. I use the plus sign. I will delete. Regular expression is ready. You see, it can find our first line. Let's try to delete the timestamp. And regular expression doesn't work. It finds nothing. Copy the expression. Passed it in our test case. And the test case is ready. Let's run them. Open package JSON file and add the script test mocha exit path to our folder with the tests. Exit forces Mocha to quit after tests complete. Sometimes it happens that one of your tests freezes and Mocha runs forever. Test command is ready. Open the terminal and write npm run test. Nothing happened because I didn't save the package JSON file. Save it and run the command again. Congratulations, our unit tests passed. I want to commit it. Let's check for the changes. We have some changes in the package log file. We have some changes in package JSON, they are OK. I check the changes in server.js file. We just added the app variable so that it will be exported. And we created a new file, server test.js. Add it to the stage. The commit message will be tested. And I write the path. First unit tests. New line, write web server unit tests. Commit. Close the files. The unit tests I wrote now will always succeed. Thus, I want to write a test case which will fail from time to time. It is not the best idea to write failing tests, but I want to have them so that our pipeline will behave more realistic. In real life, unit tests fail. Go to server test.js file and create a new describe suite. Describe, write the title, failing test function. Our test case will be run random failing test function put semicolon. I need to generate a random number. 
our variable random result equals to math dot random. This method will generate a random number. And now I want to check if it is higher than a certain value. I choose 0 0.05. If the random number is higher than 0 0.05, then the result will be true and our test will succeed. If the number is less than this value, the test case will fail. I write the assert, test random result, assert equal, as I said, I expect random result to be true. The message will be random fail, semicolon. Let's imagine how it will behave. If random number, let's say for example, is 0 0.6, it is higher than this little number 0 0.05 and the result will be true and we will have no fail. But if math random returns, for example, 0 0.01, it is less than 0 0.05, the test will fail. Generally, our test will fail with the probability of 5% and succeed with the probability of 95%. The test case is ready, time to run it. Open the terminal and write npm run test. It succeeded. I will run the test several times until the unit tests fail. I will increase the, the fail threshold so that I don't have to run it million times. I will put it 0 0.5 so the test will fail with the probability of 50%. Run the tests. And this is the message of a failing test. It failed at random failing test. And see here, we can see the message random fail. It is this one. So return it back to 5%. Run to see if it works. It's passing. The work is done. I want to commit it. I check the file for the changes. It is OK. The comment message is created randomly failing unit tests. New line, write web server, unit tests, commit. I'm going to push everything to GitHub, go to the terminal and write git push. The code was pushed. Let's check on GitHub. I opened my repository. I go to commits. Here I see the two commits I made today. I also will check the files. I go to test folder, open server test.js, and I see our file. It is all. Now your Node.js web server has unit tests. Thank you for watching.